I'm Dr. Collier in Kamloops, British Columbia. I'm a neurologist. I'm going to teach uh, you a screening neurologic examination to be used by nurses at the triage station when patients with neurologic symptoms come in. The point of the screening exam is to try to rapidly identify patients who are possibly having a stroke. So, oh look, we have someone coming in. Oh, I'm really dizzy. Let's check you over. Okay, uh, I want you to smile for me. Nice big smile, show me your teeth. Now I want you to hold your hands out in front of you, like that, and close your eyes. Where did I touch you? Both sides. Okay, very good. Open your eyes. How many fingers do you see? I see one on this side and two on that side. All right. Look at my nose. And which hand is moving? Both hands. Okay. Can you repeat after me? You can't teach an old dog new tricks. You can't teach an old dog new tricks. Can you put your baby finger on the tip of your nose? Very good. Let's see you walk around a little bit. Okay, everything looks fine. So what we just did there is um, the screening test, which is either known as the FAST test or the Cincinnati Stroke Scale score. We added a couple of elements to cover other areas of brain. The Cincinnati Stroke Scale, or the FAST, FAST is the easier way to think of it, face, arm, speech, and time. Time meaning we got to identify hot strokes and move them quickly through the system if they're going to be treated. So the other important thing that I want to comment, especially for this is our strategy in interior health, a patient comes into the triage desk with neurologic symptoms, you immediately refer and remember to use a Cincinnati stroke scale and assess the patient immediately for stroke. So if they have, if you find anything concerning on this neurologic exam we've just gone through, which is the FAST test plus neglect plus sensation um, plus visual fields. So we got a couple of extra things in there. If the patient has deficits, you immediately pull the emergency diagnostic stroke order set. Not because you've diagnosed a stroke, but because you're worried they may be having a stroke. This guides your initial treatment of the patient and investigations. So this, this poster at triage tells you, do the Cincinnati Stroke Scale score. Um, you put them as a CTAS-2 if you're having, if it's a hot stroke, CTAS-3 if it's not, if they're pretty stable. And then you put the stroke TIA emergency diagnostic order set on the chart for the physician and nurses to use while managing the patient in the emergency department. So face, we look for facial droop. Please smile for me. Show me your teeth. Big smile. Good. So it's nice and equal. Um, arm drift uh, checks for upper motor neuron weakness. Okay, close your eyes and hold your hands out in front of you, palms up. Just like that. Good. Now tell me which side I touch. Both sides. Very good. You can open your eyes. How many fingers do you see? One on this side and two on that. Okay, now look right at my nose. Which hand is moving? Both hands. Very good. Can you repeat after me? You can't teach an old dog new tricks. You can't teach an old dog new tricks. Good. Can you put your baby finger on the tip of your nose? Very good. And it's very important when doing that maneuver not to demonstrate to the patient what you want them to do because we're testing language, um, not mimicking. Now let's have you walking around, uh, just see how you're walking here, very good. Okay, did very, very good. All right, first thing we do is we test, uh, we look at their face and we see is the face drooping on one side or the other? Then we have them move. Can you smile and show me your teeth? <clears throat> Again, we assess for any facial droop or weakness. She's doing fine, we've done that. Now we're gonna test the motor system. Hold your hands out in front and we're gonna look for drift. Close your eyes. And when people aren't paying attention, sometimes if there's upper motor neuron weakness in the brain, one side starts to drift down. Okay, so it's a sensitive way to look for any weakness. And the next thing I'm gonna test is sensation. So I test it in both hands simultaneously because sometimes uh, people neglect one side. So tell me where I touch you. Which side am I touching? Both sides. Good, so she's feeling both sides. A person with a stroke may actually be able to feel, if you touch their hand, they may say it feels fine. But when you touch both hands, they neglect one side. So, and you don't really care whether they're not feeling it or whether it's neglect, either or sig are significant. The next thing we test is vision. And again, we're testing neglect at the same time, so we're testing both sides. People may see one side well, and the other side, they may see it reasonably. But when you do both sides, they may not see it because they're neglecting. So that's why I test both. So how many fingers do you see? Right, so a person with a hemianopia will miss one side. 
a person with neglect might not really see one side, even though they could count this one finger when it's by itself. When you hold them both up, they all of a sudden start looking over here and they don't pay attention to this. So it's testing neglect and vision. Another way of doing that is you can have finger counting in different, different numbers, like how many is that. Another way to do is hand movement. So I tested the lower quadrants by counting. I, I did another test. I tested the upper quadrants with hand movements. So look at my nose. Which hand is moving? Both sides. Right. So she's seeing both sides, not neglecting. And then we test language. First, I want to see, I've listened to the patient. She's spoken to me, telling me about her problems. So that's expressive speech. And um, next, we'll see how her repetition is. You can't, can you repeat after me? You can't teach an old dog new tricks. You can't teach an old dog new tricks. All right. And then we want to test how her comprehension is. So we give her a multi-step comprehension task that she has to fulfill. So let's have you put your baby finger on the tip of your nose. Very good. Um, and she did well. And the last thing we have them is walk around, which sort of tests the overall neurologic function, cerebellum, coordination, balance, sensation, proprioception, vision, everything. Walk a little bit more. So she's not bumping into anything. It looks very good. So we've done our screening neurologic examination. Um, so if we found anything wrong on the neurologic examination, we would then put the emergency diagnostic order set for stroke and TIA on the patient's chart to guide further management. If they have a significant deficit and it's less than four hours, they're considered a hot stroke. And that becomes a CTAS2 and everything's processed stat. Um, if it's uh, just kind of a routine stroke and it's over four hours, it's a CTAS3. And again, they use the same order set for both sets of patients in interior, in interior health. Uh, the key thing is we're not using this neurologic screening test to diagnose stroke. We're trying to identify possible stroke patients. When a patient comes up to triage, your job as the nurse is to try and rapidly identify whether this person is possibly having a stroke. And number two, is this possibly a hot stroke? In other words, a significant deficit less than four hours. Um, so hopefully that gives you a head start. <laughs> <laughs>